See, I was in high school at the age of 17 when we first decided to make this camp. At the end of the story, you always learn a lesson, and I love that. I look up to him personally. He's just awesome. Like, he's really funny, and he makes you feel like you can actually do what he's doing, too. I grew up in a neighborhood called Banye in Ottawa. We came from Kuwait in 1998. We immigrated here. We didn't come with a lot of money. My dad came as an immigrant with my mother. They were older, but they really were seeking a better life here. My friend said, Fad, I want to start this camp for low-income children who never had an opportunity where we grew up in. And I remember on the first day of the camp, me and my friends were standing in front of the school like this. Not sure why. We were standing there and we were waiting for the kids, but we had no idea if the kids were going to show up. And on that first day, 20 kids showed up. The parents brought them in and we played a few games and then it was snack time. And during snack time, we always get the kids to take out all their candy. Why? Because candy, a lot of times, has peanuts. And peanuts makes people die. I had 20 kids. I needed to make sure 20 kids stayed alive. The kids were taking out their candy. I gained super excited, like, yeah, this is going to be good. I'm walking away motivated and educated at the same time. It was amazing to watch. The kids were engaged the whole time. The kids were talking, they were talking back. Like his story really touched upon my story as well. We came from a similar kind of community settings. Many, many students, especially here at Brookfield High School, which is such a diverse school, can relate to his stories and his advices, which is really, really great. It's like major thumbs up, really love him. And then this next kid, standing right next to me, pulls out a box of dry mac and cheese. And he looks at me dead in the eye and says, I like dry mac and cheese. <laughs> and like 16 year old me was just about to, ah! <laughs> you know, like what the heck, who likes that? Luckily we had senior counselors. This is why it's good to pair your younger staff with some older ones. And he comes running in. He's like, oh my God, is that dry mac and cheese? And the kid's eyes just glow up. And he goes, mm-hmm. And the counselor says, well, can I have some? And the kid says, mm-hmm. And I'm just standing back here watching this happen, thinking, mm, are these fools out of their mind? And then the kid with the, the kid with the Dunkaroos, and the kid with the fruit roll-ups, and even the kid with the sweet chili heat Doritos, all turn to this one kid and say, trade ya and I pull my co-counselor aside what are you doing what was that he said Fahd sometimes we have to make split second decisions that can change the course of someone's life camp was a, a major success we had so much fun we had so many games we played dodgeball we served them grilled cheese we coloring contests all sorts of things and to this day I don't remember the kid's name but at the end of camp I got an email from his mother. And the subject line read, what have you done with my child? Oh my God, he was never supposed to eat the dry mac and cheese. She says, my child has been to special schools and special programs. He's been seeing psychologists and psychotherapists. Recently, we've come to understand that he has severe social anxiety. And he's never been able to make friends on his own. But today, He's in the park by himself, making friends. That kid went from possibly being the laughing stock of the entire cabin, because I was about to laugh at him, to one of the coolest kids at camp. In that moment, I learned that leadership is not a noun, not an identity. It's a verb, it's an action. Through leadership, about making another person feel like they belong. I challenge us to create these moments, moments of belonging, moments of dry mac and cheese, where we can just step up in our everyday lives and make a difference.